I'm working on a PT Cruiser, the hearse. Let's see if I can get a good aerial view. Just hot off the tow truck, just got here. And well, got to diagnose to see what it is. So it does attempt to crank, it just don't start up. So, I mean, it, it can't be that many different things. First thing I'm gonna do when I get a crank, no start conditions, go back to the 60s, back to the 40s, do the basics. Do we have fuel and fire? And the first thing I'm gonna be able to do since it's the most accessible, check for fuel by adding a supplemental fuel into the intake and see if it cranks. So let's do that. Well, let me show you how it attempts to crank, but don't start and then we'll go from there. I don't know if you heard that, but when you turn the cycle the key off and back on, you'll hear a click after about three seconds. Normally, that's the relay for the fuel pump to prime. So let me do that again so you can hear it. Key off. Key on. Do it again. So yeah, nothing. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is add a supplemental source of fuel. And this is the most universal tool in a mechanics arsenal, or at least for me it is, and it's brake cleaner. I use this stuff for everything. This is like the hot sauce of working on cars. So what I'm gonna do, intake, intake hose or uh, air filter housing is open and exposed. I have the pathway to the intake. I'm gonna Spray a generous amount in here. This is very dangerous. I've had cars caught on, catch on fire. So you gotta be very selective. So let's listen to see if it actually start up. If it hits, then we're just simply just gonna check for fuel delivery. So it works. That means that our crank sensor is working to control the injector pulse and the ignition system. So if it controls the fire, then it's likely going to be able to control the injector pulse. Next step is to find the fuel pump relay. See if we can just simply jump that. Uh, it's, it's only going to be like 90% conclusive. Uh, the best way to actually test the circuit is to go directly to the fuel pump, but this is just the least invasive way. I'm um, assuming you know you get you got a good, decent looking bottom end of the car. The condition is not rusted or anything, but uh, we're gonna go to we're gonna find the relay for the fuel system. I want to probably just jump where the power supply goes to the fuel pump. Maybe I can beat on it with a hammer and get the pump to become active. We'll see what happens. But let me pull a wiring diagram right quick, see what's involved with the fuel pump and see if it even actually has a fuel pump relay on this car. So I got the air box out. Uh, the reason being is because the fuse box or the Tipum totally integrated power module controls the fuel pump on this vehicle. It's a 2006 PT Cruiser. And the connector is going to be C711. It's a dark blue and orange from what the diagram stated. C7. But the good thing is it has alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, I, K, whatever, whatever. So if we go through the alphabet, G should be 7. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that should be 7. C7. And uh, it's clearly indicated here what the alphabet is. This is G here. And I gotta find that blue and orange, and it's a pin 11. Pin 11. Let's see if we can. Uh, dark blue and orange. This look like a dark blue and orange right here. I don't know if it's 11 or not, but that's the only dark blue and orange I see that's pretty obvious right here. 
So what I'm gonna do, I got a couple different options. I can turn the key in the on position, cycle the key and see if it administers power. And all I gotta do is just look for the test light to illuminate. And then I'll know for a fact the power is going to the back to the fuel pump. So it's very simple, very simple. I did not have to take any like special, use any special tools to get to this point. I just pulled the uh, air box, which was a flathead, lift everything up, bam, there it was, remove the tabs lift the fuse box will tip them out of the housing so let me test my test light make sure I'm lighting and I am this back where it belongs okay so remember I told you I heard a noise like a fuel pump was priming this is where we should be I think I got up uh, up uh. I'm gonna try to just jam in the side right there hopefully it stays i think that's probably what's priming so we should see that test light illuminate and then go off let's see what happens so yeah this is illuminating and uh, this is what sends power out to the fuel pump so the only other thing to do is to, I'm kind of reluctant about sending power through this. I could just go through my scan tool and uh, control, Have I should have a fuel pump control. Uh, um, I should have the ability to, to control the fuel pump, uh, like, a, like a test, the active test procedure. And um, I could add power bang on the fuel pump maybe i can get it a prime but more than likely it's just going to need a fuel pump uh, is let me see how invasive it is to get to the fuel pump but i'm honestly just from the age of the car just from this basic test because it could be a ground i could be wrong that's just why i say if i beat on it and it works then replace it but if i gotta pull it down and it's invasive just replace it and repair was back there. I, I, it may not seem good, but because of the age of it, I, if I'm back there, pull it out and replace it. Let me um, let me see what's involved with the fuel pump, and let me get this stuff back in here, and uh, we'll go from there. So I got the fuel pump out, and uh, I just kind of got enough room to be able to pull it out because this car got more rust than what I'm comfortable comfortable dealing with in the Carolinas. And um, but I just want to show you. You know what it look like inside of a 200,000 mile fuel tank. People typically buy fuel system treatment cleaners, and you know, like, what are you cleaning when a fuel tank looks like this? You got some what look like minimal dirt up there. I don't think that's dirt, honestly. It's probably like some. Uh, well, might be a little dirt in there, but I think that's like a little bit of impurities because of age. But, you know, the fuel tank looks very clean. And um, fuel treatment cleaner is not going to clean all that because fuel itself is a cleaning agent. When people tell you that you're, if you run your fuel low, dirt will clog up the fuel system dirt don't accumulate at the top like mushrooms i said mushrooms well mushrooms float or marshmallows they float you know the dirt will settle at the bottom if there is any but this looks clean 200,000 miles no fuel treatment cleaner here's the fuel pump i want to show you the connectors look how burnt those are that's the positive right there there's the negative Negative is burnt up too. That fuel pump just burnt out. No way I could have put a um, amp clamp on it and tested anything because it's loaded. It's, it's just burnt out. If there was an abnormal load and it shorted out, it would have blew the fuse. But there's just no connection going to the fuel pump. All right, here we go. I got a new fuel pump. I got it from O'Reilly's Auto Parts. If y'all know, I frequently patronize O'Reilly's. And they 
sometimes let me down. I do have a precision part. All right, so we should be in okay shape. I'm gonna put the new gasket in here and I'm gonna get this fuel pump installed. Mess. Any dirt in there? Uh, okay. What, um, supposed to go the other way. I forgot. I'm hitting something. I'm hitting something. sensor like I was hitting something so if I recall I think it went in this way say it did. Or this way. Right there. Yeah. And then the connector went in. It goes in. Okay. Make sure my gasket's in there good and flush. Put this ring on here. There's a special tool for this, but uh, but I don't have it. So let's make sure all the locks are sitting in their grooves and take the pry bar and hammer, knock it in there. I hope I don't create a fire. All right, let's try this again. Try getting the Try getting the lock ring on here and didn't want to sit properly and I know I got this joker in here properly. Clean the ring off with the wire wheel this time. There we go. Right. Yeah, the downside we're using the flathead is gonna mess up that ring, but it's not it's not bad. Some people say you can probably damage the fuel tank, but out of the years of doing this, never screwed it up. Plus, I don't have even if I had a tool, I wouldn't even, could have, I don't know. Either way, it's fixed. If I have any evap leaks, it's my responsibility. We never had one, so, since I've been doing it this way. Lock in place, fuel line. I could prime the pump and see if it comes on now. I think we should do that. I've got quite a bit of fuel leaking out, but I got it plugged off. It's just dripping. Let me let's see if the fuel pump work before um before I put the tank all the way up. But I'm pretty sure it is. We saw it was burnt up. I'm 
pretty sure it was a lot more louder than what than what I heard up there. I, I could hear it up there. I know y'all can hear it back here. I'm gonna get this boulder back up and see if it'll go through its initial startup and we'll see what happened. Right, here's the first startup. I do not have the air box on, obviously. That's not important right now. We just need to see if it'll start up. We did prime the fuel system, so it should just start right on up. I know I got some check engine light codes because I had the air intake temp sensor unplugged. I'm going to clear that. For some strange reason, it would not allow me to activate the fuel pump bidirectionally. So that's why I didn't show it, me trying to perform that duty. All right, cool. All right, yeah, let's see that code gone. Ah, uh, I gotta cut the car off. Let me see if let me do it. Dang it, hold on. That new fuel pump loud too. I had to cut the car off to be able to clear the code. It is what it is. All right, cool, no fault codes. Now, I, I will say uh, in regards to re repairing that fuel pump, labor time is supposed to be 1.2 hours. That That's the labor time for my Denifix. And um, this car had a little bit of rust. It wasn't, wasn't horrible. I just had to take my time getting those bolts out and hitting it with penetrant. That's why I didn't show because it was just... This was just a diagnostic video. It just came in and I need to get this job done and out of the way because I have other priorities. Anyway, I digress. Lubed the bolts up, took my time getting them out, dropped part of the exhaust hangers to get access to one of the other bolts. I didn't take the EVAP canister out or anything. Once I dropped the straps, disconnect the feeder, the fuel feed tube and the breather. And I was able to drop it and get the space that you saw and um, being that the fuel pump collapses i was able to so i will say inst installation is going to be discretionary i ain't got nothing to hide at the end of the day this took uh three hours to fix from diagnosing to finishing it up it could have been a lot more complicated but you saw the process hey if anything happened i'll definitely update but hit that link subscribe to the channel stay informed had original some work and i'll see you next one just want to show you the inside of the fuel pump assembly to gain access to the fuel pump so there's a closer view to the fuel pump it's burnt up see those witness marks there there's our ground see how bad that is Two hands to get that off. There we go. There's our contact, the ground, and the positive. You know, my curiosity is getting the best of me. I want to see if it'll work. 
and um, and then I uh, would like to maybe take it apart. But let's see, we'll put some power to it. Let me douse it in some water to dilute that fuel so I won't catch it on fire. And then uh, I might cut it up, see what happens, see what it look like on the inside. All right, take five. Let's see what happened with this one. Cause I messed up my alligator clamps before and I had another jumper wire here. So we should be fine. They were some cheapo alligator clamps from Harbor Freight anyway. This should work just fine. Oh yeah, perfect. Right, let's see what happens. So red is positive and red is negative. So I don't think it really matter. Cause I just got what I could get my hands on. Let's see what happens. Nothing. What? Did I break the connection of this one too? Gosh darn it. Why do these alligator clamps keep going to crap? How? Maybe. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, we should be. Alright. No go. It's not working. So when we tested for power early on, it, power was going back there, but it wasn't working. Let's try, let me try hitting it, see what happened. Maybe I can get it to come on, get a socket. Oh shit, it came on. Kind of did. This thing is broken. Oh, here we go. <laughs> That's why sometimes you beat the tank, it'll jolt the pump into working. Now it ain't working. Uh oh. There we go. Got power, right? Yeah. Still not working. There you go. So yeah, it's just a bad pump. We saw a witness marks. I don't think I'm gonna cut this open. I'm over it. This car's fixed. See ya.